Starship Vigilant, a Star Trek Adventures campaign. Right, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. Um, okay, so I believe this is episode 48 of Starship Vigilant. Um, so today's date is the 30th of March, 2022. Um, so if I can just do our little usual hello of who's who's with us this evening. So um, would you like to introduce yourselves and who you are playing, please? Uh, yeah, I'm Karen and I am playing Kolish, the security officer. Perfect. I am Kevin and I am playing Dos David Osterhagen. Perfect. The science and technology officer. Perfect. I am Sarah Jane and I'm playing Yara Fox, who's the head of engineering. Perfect. And um, normally we'd have Mike as Kaz, but he's not with us at the moment, so he may join, but we, we shall carry on regardless. So, um, ice hockey then. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. <clears throat> Let me try and, um, if I possibly can, try and just briefly uh, recap. So, um, as we've established previously, the Vigilant is currently docked at Narendra Station, having uh, un undergoing repairs following its return from the other dimension. Um, these have been going on for some time, and as a result, the crew have been at some sort of leisure on the Starbase um, and have been going about uh, as well as their their shipboard duties and doing their um, you know carrying out their work. They've also been able to relax a little bit. And um, during uh, a period of downtime, some of our characters came across an argument that was going on between a group of uh, Klingons and Andorians that was being um, basically they were trying to be calmed down by some of the station security personnel. And it turned out that these two factions represented um, ice hockey teams. And as we established. Um, the sport of ice hockey has has become surprisingly popular in the uh, 24th century, uh, particularly among some of the alien races uh, with a warrior bent, so Klingons and Andorians in particular. Um, and in fact, um, there is an organized um, league of teams, which is uh, which plays on various uh, Federation uh, worlds and um, outposts throughout um, Federation space. And in this, on this particular occasion, um, it, it turns out that the Klingon team had accused the Andorians of kidnapping their star goalkeeper, a, a Klingon female called uh, Shatai Shon. Um, and she had turned up for practice, uh, had taken part in practice uh, on that, this particular, on this, uh, the night before, um, and had stayed on and had meant to be joining her teammates in the uh, Blood Wine Hall later on and had never shown and has subsequently not been seen. Um, and given that she was considered to be their star player, uh, the Klingons had accused the Andorians of the dishonorable tactic of um, keeping her hostage to sabotage their upcoming match. And it turned out that one of your crew members, uh, Tala Ja Azolha, who was an Andorian uh, enlist enlisted paramedic on the Vigilant, um, a member of Dr. Plume's uh, medical crew, had uh, her, it was her brother who was basically the captain of the Andorian team, and as a result, uh, the Starbase chief of security called Sar Develi had asked um, our our crew to assist her because her team have been uh, fully stretched uh, because of the uh, threat of uh, changeling activity, and so her team had been engaged in uh, security sweeps and in trying to develop uh, protocols to test the base. Uh, uh, the base um, personnel for changing infiltration and so had basically got their hands full. And so as a result, um, our guys had uh, agreed to carry out some investigations. So what had happened was you'd gone to the hockey arena, which was located um, on the star base, um, a couple of decks down from the uh, main kind of uh, public area. And you had carried out some investigations in the arena and you had discovered that um, you discovered that the uh, there was some blood, Klingon blood that you found um, that had been cleaned up by the Zamboni, because I'm going to say that word again, uh, which <laughs> is the little auto, the, I know, 
Um, you can still see the image in the game chat there, but this is the, the gadget which basically cleans up the ice after an ice hockey match. Um, and as you recall, you'd done some investigation and you'd ended up going to the, to the locker rooms where you had found um, a fake Andorian body in that it was an Andorian, um, but the Andorian uh, was missing an antenna and it subsequently turned out that this, this was in fact a disguised Orion. Um, so you'd, you'd found uh, you'd found in the Zamboni garage, um, if you remember, there'd been a uh, hockey mask which had been rigged to um, essentially generate a knockout um, blast to the wearer. Um, and this, this clothing had been had been uh, picked up by the Zamboni, had been discarded. And as I say, you'd investigate in the shower rooms, you'd found a, a body in the shower. So obviously you contacted security, he would come down. And as you recall... Um, um, I think you'd also spotted, um, uh, let me just have a look at this. Yeah. So what you'd done was you'd, um, uh, figured out that it was, uh, as I say, an Andorian. And so I believe where we'd got to was that you'd, um, figured out, or at least you'd identified that there was an Orion ship docked, uh, cause you'd looked at some video footage and you'd found out, I think that there was a female Orion, um, with one of these fake Andorians who had been seen leaving her sh ship, um, and then a, a cloaked figure had returned um, to the ship later. But and, and as far as you could tell from the video footage, uh, there'd been no sign that this female Orion captain had subsequently left her ship. So does that kind of tally with what everybody remembers? Yeah. So yeah. we we followed an Orion back to this ship, um, yeah. and then we. We pulled up the security footage of the of the um, loading bay or whatever it was, um, and we saw at one point the captain leave with this uh, disguised Orion, um, yeah, yep. uh, who was pushing a little um, cart or a sort of laundry oh, basket yeah. style. Yeah. That was it, thing. yeah, because we uh, that's it. We established it was more of a laundry basket than a than a because I think I said it was a food trolley, but no, what well, you're right, it was a laundry basket. A bit that bigger, sense. isn't it? Like yeah, yeah, old, exactly. yeah, yeah. Um, and we saw her return on the footage, but we didn't see him return. We did see them both meet another what looked to be um Andorian near the um arena, yeah. Um, but again, we didn't, and we saw that Orion leave and we saw the captain leave, but we obviously, we know why the, uh, disguised Andorian didn't leave because we found them dead. Um, and we also don't know the whereabouts of this laundry basket. Okay. So I, I think, we, sorry, go on. No, that's I me. Think Okay, I think we'd, um, I think, okay, so as I recall then, yes, you're right. You're absolutely right. So I think we, at this point, um, so you've, you've ascertained that from the surveillance footage that the, um, the Orion female who you uh, believe to be the Orion captain, whose name is Paja Tajenko, who, if you recall, um, was also a, a character that you had encountered uh, some months before on a remote um, Federation science station where she'd been, um, she'd essentially been there with her crew and you'd, you'd had some dealings with her. Um, and so you'd kind of recognized her from the footage. Um, and as I say, her ship, um, is, is still currently docked, um, at one of Narendra stations, uh, docking ports, as Karen rightly says, that's where you'd got the video footage from. Um, and I think that's kind of where we, where we'd got to. So, um, I don't believe you'd made any further, um investigations so um so we'll assume um it's the same uh the same the same day we've kind of picked up pretty much straight after so um where would we what would we like to do or what what, what can i uh what can is there anything else i can tell you before we move on i, I so can't remember one of the things I, I i just Sorry, I was just, just going to say, I can't remember the hockey mask. Did we have a good look at that to, to see uh, if we could figure the out... The hockey mask was, was from our first session. Um, yeah, that's right. That was one of the first things we found was the hockey mask. Um, yeah, and the hockey mask is the only thing that makes me think that this wasn't... Um, the Orions were up to something and then this Klingon just sort of stumbled upon it. And, mm. um, yeah, because this hockey mask was rigged, it feels more like this this Klingon was actually targeted because otherwise I would assume that um, 
yeah, hanging back after practice, they they stumbled across a deal that looks like it was going on between um, Andorians, um, and they got into a scuffle, killed what they thought was an Andorian, but it wasn't. It was an Orion, and then either got themselves killed or kidnapped. But the fact that this hockey mask was rigged to shock, um, yeah, that 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 throws a spanner in the works. Unless that is not quite related maybe that was rigged to go off during the match and it and it has nothing to do with maybe they're just wrong place at the wrong time i don't know has anyone got any theories well one thing i had thought about was we, one thing we hadn't looked at was the actual player herself whether there was a uh, i guess a political motive for getting her out of the picture is it a case that she's actually um in in secret a part of a, an anarchic group within the klingon empire is she a member of it? Is she in her social media posts, if there's such a thing? Is she posting about free, wrestle hard, or whatever? Is it a case that she's dumped off for her political beliefs rather than is it, is it is the actual, is it a bigger picture that we're missing or not? Well, we didn't actually do any sort of background check on her. I know no. that we, we, we know she worked as an engineer, but we didn't go down and, and talk to any of her colleagues. We didn't talk to no. any of her friends or family so we don't actually know anything about her really which is a bit of a misstep it, it, the, the, the other thing is is she on a ship that is an experimental ship that has a new targaryen drive that nobody knows about that she was trying to selling to um somebody else i reckon i reckon you just made that word up didn't you targaryen <laughs> yeah i was i was um, thinking of what are those friends yeah yeah no I, that wasn't i know do what's the um isn't there one in Discovery that's got a bizarre little drive? Um, yeah, the slip, slipstream drive. Yeah, well, it's, isn't that... It, no, it was Discovery. Have, I was just talking about Discovery. Oh, I'm, 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 yeah. Is it tar Tardigrade or something like that? Tardigrade, tardigrade yeah. That's tardigrade, right. yeah. That's the spore yeah. drive, yeah. But anyway, so, so something like that, that you know, she's either going to sell or she's been bumped off because of that, or is that just too big a thing for this type of scenario? That's meta game. It's not meta game. You, 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 you certainly. I mean, again. So you, if just to, just to re um to reiterate. So you you have been given um um investigative powers. I mean, you've effectively been deputised by the chief of security for the base. Um, although although you are so particularly Kalish, obviously being a security um officer um and a senior security officer, and also being senior within the base hierarchy because of course you kind of report directly to the um to current to the colonel to the klingon uh, commander as we've established in the past that you you know so you're you're kind of you, uh, kalish if anything has probably a little bit more pull with the station um hierarchy than she probably even realizes mm. um and but again given that she, you're also chief of security on a one of you know a starfleet ship and um, and again, you've been asked to, to, to act on behalf of the, 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 the base as chief of security. Um, so you've, you, you have got sort of investigative powers, um, you know, within reason. So you, you can pretty much, um, if you want to get access to um, her, if you want to investigate her, um, you know, as you say, her relationships with the engineering personnel, you can certainly get access to engineering to do that. You can... Um, talk to anybody within certainly base personnel would be obligated to um provide you with info the only i guess the only people who don't have any real obligation to talk to you are going to be the orions so obviously her you know orion ship is orion territory if you like so although it's docked at the base um you know that yeah, might be the only area yeah. where they, they've, they're under no obligation let's say to um yeah assist you but having said that as i say you do have fairly wide powers um um elsewhere so steve can we take a closer look at this this mask this this mask i want to know yeah, if yeah, um if this shop was um was going to be triggered by remote if it was going to be triggered at a certain time and whether Excellent. or not it yeah, has yeah. whether or not it yeah, has it been triggered yet. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so um, but what you do basically then is you go back, you you, you return to the um, and I'll, I'll assume that you're all sticking together unless you tell me differently. Um, 
But so you re- you return to the so you've been to the um, you've been in the security office looking at the video feed um, in in terms of the Orion uh, ship footage that you've looked at, um, and you go return to the hockey to the hockey arena, um, and as as we'd established, the security uh, detail had been down to remove the body, um, and they've basically uh, cordoned off the locker room um, whilst they were carrying out their investigation. So when you get back to the um, hockey arena. Um, a couple of hours have passed, and the um, investigative team appear to have done their work. Um, they've, um, you know, they've taken down the. Um, I want to. I want to say tape, but it's not very Star Trek, is it? Um, but they've taken down. They've taken down the. They you know. They've. They've opened holotape. the area up again. Yeah, they hollow tape. There you go. Um, because basically, with the advanced um, equipment that obviously. Um, security personnel have access to. They've done, um, you know, tricord scans of the crime scene. They've taken samples and everything. So um, it, it's a lot quicker than it would be in a contemporary um, crime scene. You know, they've they've done all of that. So they've taken all their evidence. They've done their scans, and they've basically, you know, so so there's no security personnel um, down there, with the exception of one. Um, there's a security ensign. Um, in fact, no, he's not. He's a security crewman um, who's from the base. Uh, personnel so Kalish you don't recognize him particularly but you you know you, he's a he's a young guy and he's been posted I've seen uh, him at the Christmas party yeah exactly you probably yeah you probably would recognize him from from the the security team but he's very lowly you know he's a, he's an enlisted man yeah um and he's been posted at the um at just at the entrance to the locker area uh, and to the back the back um I want to say backstage it's not the right word but it, you know the kind of service area behind and he's he's just there um and anybody who is who is um entering the area he's just asking them if they've got any information there's a and there's there's literally you know signs have been put up you know typical thing you know if you if you've got any information contacts based security um and he's just there to um you know if if, if anyone comes back uh, he, he'll question them so obviously he sees you approaching um, and he kind of snaps to attention um, as you approach because he recognises um, you, Kalish, in particular, but he also recognises that the others are, you know, your senior um, uh, ship personnel. So he's sort of like, you know, um, just stands to attention as you end, <coughs> as you approach. Um, he won't challenge you, um, and you're you're free to go into the uh, back into the uh, uh, the garage area for the thingy, um, and uh, the mask is still is still there. Um, the mask and the gear is still there, um, so you're you're certainly free to investigate it as you see fit. Before we go in, can um, can I ask yeah. him whether he whether yeah. he has heard of anything that could help us? Sure. Um, he's he's uh, oh oh ma'am. Uh, uh, well well uh, I I know that um, I know that the, 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 the um, forensics team have completed their investigations, ma'am. Um, They've taken they've taken all the samples and all the scans. Um, I, I'm sure they'll go through them. I, I haven't heard anything else. To, to be honest, ma'am, I don't think they would they would really tell me much. Um, but you know, if there's anything I can do to help, please please let me know. Um, I'll, I'll be here. Okay. Keeping Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. So um, you've got this. You've, got, you've still got this gear here, anyway. So if you want to investigate it, feel free. Uh, I would like to. Yeah. Um, um, okay. So okay, so you've got this hockey mask. So it looks like a a goalkeeper's hockey mask. The difference being that because it's twenty um, fourth century tech, as I think we established, that it has like a a, a force field as opposed yes. to a physical face mask, if you like. So you still put it on your head, but rather than it having that kind of you know mesh, um, you know, like a, a, a hockey hockey goalkeeper's mask, um, it has like a um, it has a, a force field generator which puts up a force like a little force field um and and i think um if i remember rightly i think on on your initial investigation i think um osterhagen had 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 discovered that it had been rigged to generate a shock i don't think as yeah. as you were asking about whether it had been remotely triggered i don't think i don't think you looked at it that closely but you we had figured out that it had been you know um yeah, messed you would with. Send, a, send a shock yeah could, sure. could i get dna off i can't remember whether i got dna off or not um, you can, I mean, certainly you, certainly you can. Um, and, um, I think, um, if in the meantime, if Kalish would like to make a, make a little role for me, cause you've got, obviously you've got security, um, 
um, you know, security um, um, equipment. You've got a security tricorder, for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if you would like to give me a... So, so first of all, if you want to tell me what you're trying to find out. So um, I would, uh, in, the, in the broadest picture, I need to figure out whether or not this, this shock that was, that was rigged up is coincidental to her going missing um, mm-hmm. or whether or not it's part of this plan. So I need to find out whether or not... Um, this has triggered yet this this shock has triggered or if it's set to trigger um, is the first thing and then i guess whether or not uh the trigger is timed or it's triggered by remote okay so i would suggest um to me that would suggest um probably uh, I'm thinking insight and engineering. I think insight and engineering, um, but I would also allow you to do insight and security, which would give oh, you a better. Uh, it would yeah. chance because you're you're using you're coming at it from a, you're using your security tricorder, and wow. security covers. Uh, yes, you can. That's. I'm glad you mentioned. I was going to exactly suggest that. Um, so the way this the way this works then is in Star Trek Adventures. If you're going to do an assist. <laughs> Um, what we do is we get we get um, Karen to roll first of all. So Karen, you get to roll two d twenty. Yep. Um, I, I completely concur. Insight security, so that gives you a target. I think of twelve. Um, I don't think there are any applicable uh, focuses that I can see. No, I haven't got any. And then what we'll do, Sarah Jane, is that you can assist with um, you can insist with I guess probably insight and engineering. Um, and you only have to roll one one d twenty. So basically, as long as Karen gets one success, then you get to roll your dice, and then that will give you give us a, so that. That's basically you helping him out. So yeah, no sorry, successes. you want me to write n- no focus? Uh... Yeah. So I'll tell you what, Karen. Then, if you want, you can. Um, I'll. I'll. You can give me a point of threat if you like to. Um, yeah. To re roll again. That. Yeah, yeah. Please. So I'm going to give my. I'm going to from from my pile of poker chips here. I'm giving myself a point of threat. So if, if no, you wanna... still no oh, good. Really? Okay. In that case, then let's let's do this slightly differently. So in that case, Sarah Jane, why don't you do the same role but use two d twenty? So you you Kalish kind of is looking at this yeah. gadget, and and let's say that this seems to be um, because because using the concept of sort of um, uh, like fail forward, if you like. Um, so although you haven't been able to determine that what one thing you have learned is that actually this seems to be quite technologically advanced the work that's been done on this is surprisingly complex which is why you're not able to really get to grips with it okay. so in other words this is not something that's been um shall we say rigged together you know it's, this is not a, um, a kind of a bodge job yeah. this has been done in, in quite an t- advanced way to the point that you're like Hang on a minute. I can't, you know, why can I not see what's happening here? So what you can do if, is um, Giara wants to roll two, two D20. Yep. Um, now, have you got any focuses that might apply? Let me have a little look. I haven't. I've got a warp drive, Giara, Giara may have power systems, transporters and replicators, small craft negotiations, oh, well. and athletes. Okay, but electroplasma power systems could actually help you. Oh, okay. Uh, because you, because basically this kid gizmo is, is rigged to generate... Um, uh, uh, like an electric uh, essentially i'll say electric shock is a bit mundane but that's the gist of it yeah so actually i'm going to allow you to use that focus okay so what if you want to take your little focus but uh the complication range will stay where it is so you don't have to touch that you just have to say yes to focuses uh in, insight security and then roll your 2d20 what's the complication was on four so shall i leave it on four um no just you think you just leave it on um, you want it on one, right? Yeah, it should be on one. I'll do that. There you go. I'll change it to one. Yeah. So all that means is you get a complication if you roll a 20. So, um, right, there you go. Go ahead and roll that for me. Bloody hell. <laughs> <gasps> okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, that's fine. Is that a complication? There it is, isn't it? That's a complication. Okay. That's fine. Um, okay. So. So one of us gets <laughs> shot. <laughs> Interesting. Well, Should I just put yeah. the mask on? <laughs> How do I how do I how do I break this to you? <laughs> yeah, you decide to you decide to test it by putting it on. <laughs> okay. Do you, want to, do you want me to have a look at it? You can have a look at it. Yeah. Um, I'll come back to the complication in a minute. So yeah, you go and have do the same again. Um, so you can use 
I would probably use insight and science, uh, in, yeah. insight and engineering, because you've got quite a good engineering score, haven't you? No, science is better than it. Uh, we'll go for, go for science. I'll let, I'll let you get away with it, because this thing's de de defying all efforts to... Um... So, two, uh, task two, complication range. Uh, I'm not using a focus. Leave complication range where it is, and it should be uh, 2d20. There you go. One success. Happy days. <laughs> okay. Well, that's where okay. we were going wrong. I was trying security... You were trying engineering, and it turns out it was science that we needed. Okay, yeah. See, science is the yeah, science. <laughs> Didn't you two um, see this um, instruction manual hidden behind the battery? Instructions <laughs> are cheating. Yeah, nobody reads uh. instructions. What are you talking about? Um, okay, so this is good. Okay, so actually, this this works well. So uh, it might not sound like it, but it works well. <laughs> uh, so. Um, what this what this tells us is so again first of all Kalisha has looked at this object and has has, has looked at it from a security point of view i.e. you know um, is this a tra is this been set as a trap um, and as as we've established Kalisha, Kalisha's efforts are met with frustration and and it soon becomes apparent after Giara also looks at this thing that that um, you can determine because um, uh, Osterhagen managed to successfully. Um, scan it so you have determined that this thing is remotely activated which is what you were trying to establish so in other words this isn't this is not something this is something that has been uh set up so that it can be activated uh from a distance um however you also have determined that the technology used um for this perf on this device is way um more sophisticated than um, you would expect if this was a simple matter of, shall we say, um, Orion's rigging, you know, trying to rig a, a hockey match, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. so this this seems to be much more in the purview of sort of intelligence services, um, and there is some quite serious technology. So, you've uh, Osterhagen's been able to determine um, that this device uses um, a kind of a subspace relay to allow it to be activated from essentially any distance um now that doesn't mean that it's been activated by you know by somebody three light years away but what it means is that um whereas even in the 24th century um a, a, a simple device would probably just use a short range communicate you know it'd, you'd essentially use like a communicator to, to to carry the signal equivalent of a mobile phone that we would you know a terrorist would use today so can um, i get its ip address and, and ping the well, ip and as, you, the as you're as you're fiddling as you're investigating and as i say you've managed to make some progress and again this has taken you all um you know let's say 10 or 15 minutes of kind of, of looking at this thing and as, as you've both all been working on it you've all kind of gone mm, this is you know this is more tricky than we thought. Um, and as we saw, uh, Giara rolled a, a complication there. So what's happened there is as as you're investigating Osterhagen and you've managed to determine, um, you know, you've managed to make a base scan of this and you've managed to determine its function, um, the device actually, um, you, you notice that the system begins a, essentially begins as like a self-destruct protocol um, and you, you quickly toss it away from you. So that you, you kind of grab it off the, grab it away from the others and sort of quickly throw it into the corner of the room. And this thing just goes and sort of explodes, uh, not, not a large explosion, but it's enough to, um, it's enough to basically um, kind of remove the evidence. But again, that in itself suggests to you um, quite high level of sophistication um, in that this device has been, you know, has realised it's being tampered with and has basically destroyed itself to prevent evidence. So I'll just let you digest mm -hmm. that for a moment while yeah. I have a little drink. Um, so luckily you didn't, luckily, again, I, I mean, obviously this evidence was still there um, and I don't think you'd actually communicated that to base security, which is fine because you are still investigating so you know you've not done anything wrong it's just that that the reason it was still there was because they were more concerned about the body that had been found rather than the yep. disappearance of the goalkeeper yep of course oh so having okay so that's where we are at the moment then so you've you've, you've gone back to look at this evidence and it's um given you something else to think about so uh, what would you where would you like to proceed to next to move this forward so does so does the system uh, the the base have a kind of uh, in effect a subspace router in which you can see the activity of IP addresses over the entire um, system and therefore be able to see um, any pings 
within the arena and try and locate it from an external source. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go a bit gumshoe on you here, i.e. the, the system. Um, so I'm I'm going to tell you that um, that line of investigation, what it basically tells you, because uh, again, you could go off and we could play that out. And you go off and speak to somebody, but basically, you you make that inquiry um, because you're obviously the base has its own internal communication system. So the first thing you do is you speak to the um, you, you can you can basically talk to the uh, operations deck. Um, and you, you get to speak to like the operations manager on duty, um, who'll be some, you know, some left lieutenant. Um, and he, you sort of liaise with, with her and um, she comes back to you and says, well, they've run a scan on the base's communication system. So there doesn't appear to be any um, un, uh, unusual traffic in the, in the rough time period that you've given them. Because obviously you can only estimate, you know, roughly when the Klingon was last seen by her teammates. Um, and so you know vaguely when the body was found uh, or that we're, rather when the person was killed. Um, and so you've got probably a, a, let's say a three or four hour window um, in which this incident may have happened. And so um, by, by speaking to the operations manager who's on duty, you, you're able to establish that no, um, that nothing was, was registered by the base's own systems during that period. Now, all that tells you, um, again, Kalish can interpret um, the sort of the techno babble, but but basically what they're telling you is that all that tells you is that the, however this was done, this device didn't use the base's own uh, communication system. So normally, if you use a communicator on a a star a starship or a star base, the communicator ties into the um, ship or base's communication system it's more efficient because the communicator itself is only quite short range and what it does is it it hooks into into other systems to to to, to broaden its range if that makes sense yeah so um in this case there's plenty of traffic you know all through the base where people you know use the communicators and whatever that's all perfectly normal there's nothing um and given the parameters that you've given her she can't see any unusual or unauthorized messages during that period but that only means that this device probably used its own uh, comm channel. So that would suggest to you, first of all, two things. First of all, that the, that it is probably short range. So um, as I mentioned, you know, even, even advanced communications devices, the range is, 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 you know, not massively long. So it would, it would probably tie into um, the basis systems if it was going for any distance. So the chances are that it was probably a fairly short range um message and secondly again this again reiterates to you that the um, device is more sophisticated than you might think given that um, it has its own internal communication system that is capable of doing this so um, and as i say she she says that she can keep she'll keep a a, a tag on the bases uh she'll, she'll put a flag on the bases comm systems so if they do pick up any un, un, you know, unusual, unauthorized um, traffic, then she'll she'll flag it to you. Um, but other than that, there's no nothing to indicate. Uh, you can't trace it. Is what you, I think you were trying to get at. So yeah. So okay. The next question then is. So this is this is probably coming from that ship um, that we were looking at the other day with the um, uh, the Orion uh, ship. Yeah. Yeah. That aside, is it possible there is a cloaked Klingon? or other cloaked ship in the area? Is that something we could check? It's possible. Um, so, Kalish, um, you can probably um, handle this yourself because um, there are probably two ways you could handle this. So the first way that this could be handled is you could um, obviously speak. Again, the base could um, try and scan for such a thing. Now, given... Um, you know, obviously the cloaking device is known technology and, and as has been established in the series, there are certain um, conditions that will give away the presence of a cloaking device. You might not be able to see through it, but, um, you know, it, it's not out of, out of the question for you to be able to detect it. However, given your position, um, you probably would have better methods of detect or finding it than the, the Starbase personnel. That makes sense. Okay. Big bag of flour out the way, out the airlock. Just there is that, yeah. Second around. Yeah, there is that. Um, so if you, do you, so you could probably talk to um, what's his name, General um, Second in Command bloke. Who's oh, I, I do apologise, I haven't got my book to hand. 
um, General Cargan, I think it was. Uh-huh, who's, he, you know, he's basically the base second in command. Um, so again, you, it's up to you how you want to play that. You could you could either make inquiries that way. Or, I mean, you could probably just go and scan for it yourself. Because again, being a Klingon uh, tactical officer, you, you I'm sure you know exactly which frequencies the um, you know typical cloaking device operates on. So although you may not want to share that with um, your colleagues, even though they are your colleagues, you you could certainly do that yourself without too much difficulty. I would say. Yeah, yeah. If it was um, a Klingon ship, but if it was. Um... Uh, Romulan. Romulan, yeah, exactly. If it's Romulan, you may not be able to. But um, as Kevin's asked, I could, I could certainly, I could certainly um, do a search for Klingon ships to see if there are any cloaked. Um, before doing that, I think I would um, speak to um, my contacts in Klingon intelligence and ask them directly: Is there any ships that I should know about outside the station that are cloaked? Uh, and if I get back a negative, then I will do a uh, a scan or a sweep the way that I know how to. Perfect. Um, right. So again, we'll, we won't. Um, we'll, we'll we'll go through that. That's perfect. Perfectly um, sensible. So w- what you do is then you go off to. You probably will go off and find a quiet. Um, uh, I say you know. It depends. It depends how you want to handle this. But again, you you go off and um, you can either just use your communicator or you can go and find a, a comm terminal. Because uh, again, although you're in this hockey arena, obviously it is still part of this base, and so there are still uh, comm terminals scattered about. So you can easily find a comm terminal, or you can just use your own uh, communicator, and you can make a few calls effectively. Um, and I, I, I could, they, within within fifteen minutes, you are confident that there's nothing going on here. Which um, certainly they're not telling you. Let's put it that way. It doesn't mean you know. Obviously, there's always the possibility that there's something you're not being told. But of course, again, you, you know, there's no reason why they would not tell you. And so officially and unofficially through your, your own channels that you, you are able to, um, to communicate with, you know, they are not aware that there is any sort of covert Klingon presence. I mean, again, you know, there doesn't need to be, cause this is a Klingon, yes. you know, this is a half Klingon station. So yeah. um, the only reason a ship would be cloaked and I, you know, I understand Osterhagen's point is if there was something untoward going on, mm-hmm. but as far as they can tell you, there isn't, they're not aware that there is any cloaked uh, Klingon vessels in the vicinity of the base for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, and again, it's, I mean, if you want, you can, you can roll for, to try and see if you, if you believe, believe them. I mean, I'm, that that's what they tell you. And I don't suppose you have any reason to doubt that response, but. Um, no, I don't. And I think from Kalisha's point of view, she's she's following up um, Osterhagen's line of thought. It's not necessarily hers, so she's not going to be, oh, I'm going to push this extra hard. Unless Ost- Osterhagen sort of pushes her to push harder, but she'll, she'll relay the information to him that there are no, at least Klingon cloaked ships. Cool. Okay. It, it, if, it's re- if it's Romulan, let's, let's, let's go one step further and say, um, it's a Romulan ship. Why would the Romulans get in bed with the Orions to do this unless they're attempting to get... The I don't, yeah. that, there's, I mean, there's, there's nothing here that suggests Romulan involvement. No, no. Um, other than that, they're sneaky bastards, of course. Yeah, of course yeah. the, the, other, the other possibility is this is a message. Now, the other guy that was um, involved in the fight, was it her boyfriend, her brother, or... The other... um, it, it was um it was um her teammate oh, it wasn't team team was they, they were they were the t- oh um sorry yes um the andorian um captain of the the cat sorry the captain of the andorian hockey team whose name i have got written Is down zio or something yeah i'm gonna tell you yeah, Z- it was zio you're quite right um it was zio um and his name yes he's as uh, yes yeah, yeah zio to Fleury, who's the um, he's the captain of the Andorian Atomics, which is the team. Um, so he's the brother of That's your yeah. um, medical officer or your med- your your paramedic, basically. That's yep. a possibility. This is a message for not her, but somebody um, she knows on the Klingon side. It's a message say, "Stop what you're doing. We've got you. We've had your sister." The other possibility is this: been, this has been done to make somebody in the Orion team look bad or look suspicious to to well, that's that's quite high stakes. But I don't mean the Orions have got a team yet, have they? No, not the Orions, the um Andorians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that that's that's too that's too high stakes, isn't it? To to go right, well I've nobbled an other teammate to make the Andorians look bad. So it's probably 
that, that I think that's too high stakes. It's probably the Klingon side. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so what, what, why don't I suggest then what, what you could probably probably the next line of inquiry that you probably need to follow up is to try and talk to the Orion captain. Yeah. So I um, was I was going to she... suggest after Kevin had his his um, thoughts uh, yeah. was that we need to run some interviews, um, bring in the Orions yeah, for an perfect. interview, and also um, interview our missing Klingons um, colleagues and teammates as well because we, I don't think we've spoken to them. No. Perfect. So, so who would you like to? What would, how would you like? Or what would, who would you like to tackle first? Well, if we're going to get the Orions in, is it possible okay. to get the, the captain in, um, but then orchestrate some kind of ship inspection by the the um, by the uh, the ship inspectors, and to get well, well, to have a look? Well, um, I mean, okay, that's yes. That I mean, obviously, that's a possibility because um, the um, okay. Let's think this through. So. The Orion ship is is docked at the starbase, um, and there are customs inspectors. You know when ship docks, um, and obviously there are certain regulations around that. What you can do, however, is the first step is you can just simply try and reach out to the Orions because, again, uh, you know it could be as simple as going up to the ship and knocking on the hatch, and because ultimately they're they're docked there, um, yeah. and it uh, it will depend how you know you don't know how they're going to react to that approach because they could cooperate i mean orions being orions you all of you have had experience with orions in the past um to uh so sarah jane do you know you know about anything about you know about the orions right <clears throat> a bit yeah so they're the sort of green yeah, yeah. um green skinned um and they're basically um they're basically the sort of um i, I suppose pi pirates is a uh, a cheap <laughs> way out of it but basically they kind of dress like you know they're all kind of flamboyant and and they're all about um smuggling and you know dodgy doings that they're, they're kind of like it's a bit like the ferengi i suppose but yeah. um this this area you've had dealings with the orions uh, or rather the vigilant has had dealings with the orions before and in fact, um, the or original commanding officer of the Vigilant, um, Naismith, had a history with the Orions. And in fact, your, the very first adventure um, of the Vigilant was dealing, was essentially dealt with Orions. And so they're mm. in this area quite a bit. Um, and Orions, are, uh, you know, that you can find them in different ways. You know, they, they're always probably on the make. Um, but also having said that, they they do trade on this station. So I guess one, you could approach it in, from a point of view of, you know, cooperate or we'll buy you from the station because ultimately they, they have um, goods and services to offer, whether that be prostitution or gambling, you know, they're here for the, as far from what you've been able to ascertain, if you remember, um, they're probably here because of the gambling on the hockey match, because, um, officially, gambling is sort of frowned upon, if not outright banned. Certainly on on this station, there is some of it because, again, when you've got a Klingon contingent, um, you know, there's going to be gambling, there's going to be that sort of stuff going on. And and from what you know, the Orions are probably here to take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, and they've they've probably got a book running, and they'll probably have a casino. Most of their ships have like a casino. You know, literally, there'll be a casino on the ship. Yeah, and so you, you're pretty sure that when the match, the hockey match is going on, there's likely to be a big old party going on with gambling and drinking and all that. So it could be that you could just approach the Orions and say, "Look, you know, if you don't cooperate or don't at least talk to us, then we'll just have you evicted from the station." And that's a profit, a profit and loss situation for them, and that they won't like, they won't want to do that. They want to, they're there to make profit. Um, and as Kevin said, then your fallback is if they don't go for that, then you can also follow it up with a um you know well customs inspection time you know and do it that way so before we so do she that could be, she could have actually been indebted to them on uh, through gambling and therefore owes them and didn't pay and therefore was, was bumped off because could then be. could be i don't know i'm i'm no, I mean it's all good theories. Like I say, it's um all you know for sure is that Orion's where there's where there's gambling, where there's um you know illicit drinking, where there's prostitution, where there's um smuggling, there's likely to be Orion's in some some ca capacity or another. Um, and so uh, again, it's a, you can you can approach them in any way you 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 feel appropriate. So I'll let you have a talk about that for a minute and um, decide how you want to tackle that. Um, can I, can I just... So, yeah. 
I was just going to say, um, I, I can't remember, I don't know whether whether I just can't remember or whether it was talked about before I, I um, got involved in this. Um, do we actually know the, the identity of the dead Orion? No, we um, don't. We are. No, he, fact, he's in... we haven't asked. Um, I think you you did you did try and identify him if I remember rightly. I think you did try and scan him, and he what he he was identified as a member of the crew of the Orion ship, whose name uh, what the, what was the name of the ship? I can't even remember. Uh, no, there is an image. And let me just have a look back in Discord because I did put an image oh, okay. of the ship up. I know Pardew um, Jenko was the captain of the the Mara. Yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, my, my Mara, I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And that's the image is in the game chat. Um, yeah, you're right. So, um, yeah, he, the only thing you know is he was identified as being a crew member um, of, of the Orion ship. So, again, that does tie him um, categorically to the Orion ship. Yeah. As far, cool. as, as, far as we know, it's one of their crew members who've, who's been murdered. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So there's another angle you could take is we're investigating the death of your your crewmate. Yeah. Because, again, he's been you're absolutely right. He's been murdered. And you could you again, you know, and again, you, you have credentials. Um, so you're not kind of, in, you know, you're not like bumbling about you. You are actually acting on behalf of station security. So, yeah, you, there's another angle for you to take. Yeah. yeah. So which would be the best um, starting position, do you think? Well, I was thinking, um, say to her that. Um, she was spotted on uh, camera with with this guy, but he was currently um, uh, an Andorian. Well, he looked like yeah. an Andorian, so we, yeah. we could pull up a, a freeze frame of her with this Andorian and say, yeah. we're, "We're trying to track this Andorian down. Do you know about his whereabouts? You, he was last seen with you. See what she says then." Yeah. Um, and depending on what she says, we could then move into, well, we know that he's not an Andorian, that he's actually a member of your crew, he's an Orion, and see go. where that leads. And then finally, would it surprise you that he is dead sort of thing, you know, depending on, on her answers. Yeah, exactly. You, you can easily, you've got all of that footage is on your tricorder, so um, you, can, you can easily show her the footage. There's no... There's no um prevarication there you've got it to hand you can say yeah we've got the fridge so i think yeah that's that's perfectly yeah perfectly good okay so good good science no a good um starfleet officer bad starfleet officer would the, orion, <laughs> would the orion view the klingon as um a more aggressive than a human when yes 100 yeah 100 percent yeah okay um only because Most again, we consider a klingon more yeah, aggressive exactly. than human. <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. I mean, and the good thing about having a Klingon on your um, your team is that um, Orions are, as a rule, intimidated by Klingons because Klingons are physically more imposing. Um, although, you know, there are obviously, and you know, the Orions have a, a range of sizes and body types. But again, Klingons don't like Orions as a rule. And, and you'll find that Orions try not to do business in Klingon controlled right. space because Klingons tend to just shoot them. So, so whereas the Federation will, you know, worst case scenario, they will arrest you and they will put you in a nice clean brig overnight and they will give you, you know, three square meals a day and then you'll probably be released back to your ship, you know, through political means. Okay. Uh, so Klingons will take you out the back and they'll just vaporise you. They won't mess about. So, yes, uh, certainly the bad cop is going to be Kalish, I think, in this, uh, in this equation. How does this end? Um, if if um, Kalish stands there looking imposing, Gaira... F- um, it uh, leads the actual discussions, and um, Oster Hagen will sit in the background. And when we think they're lying, he'll he'll raise an eyebrow, but not yep. say anything unless we need to. Kind of. So I guess I guess we will um, before we go in, we'll have a discussion about what what um, Gaia needs to say uh, um, for us to then interject. So if if you do the questioning but we know that when you if you say <clears throat> or cough once or whatever then one of us is to interject as a kind of a, a, a plan to manage the conversation with this person oh okay that's abso- all of that is absolutely fine mm-hmm. um right cool so basically you i'm going to assume then that you simply head for the orion ship um and when you 
as you've seen on the footage before, uh, basically the Orion ship is is docked onto one of the exterior station docking ports. So the do the station has um, docking ports around its uh, sort of central ring section. So ships can dock in uh, sort of nose first, if you like. Um, those that are capable of doing it can just they just you know they literally dock in at the front or they they pull up to the side. So basically, you go into this kind of um, you know utilitarian um, area. There's um, there's an uh, an inner airlock to the station, so which is open. Um, and then as you go you go through that door, there's basically a, um, uh, a like a reception area, if you like. And a reception area, it's it's pretty functional. There's a console, a station console in uh, in the wall. There's a, a couple of uh, bench seats and then there's a, a door an, a, an airlock door which leads to the um to the ship itself um, and as you approach there is an andorian crew member who is standing at the door um he he obviously is a is on guard or a sentry but he's he's trying not to look sorry like andorian steve sorry did i say andorian i meant i meant orion apologies okay, cool um, my, my apologies, yeah, it's an Orion, um, and he's standing at the door, but and, and he's obviously a sentry, but he's 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 trying to look, um, you know, he's not, he doesn't appear to be armed, um, although you suspect he probably is armed, um, at least covertly, um, and as you approach, um, obviously he, he sort of, first thing he sees is he sees the Klingon and kind of bristles slightly or or kind of maybe you're not sure whether he bristles or whether he looks worried it's a bit difficult to tell um however he he then you can see his train of thought as he then sees the two um first of all he sees obviously the two starfleet officers accompanying kalish and then also clocks kalish's um starfleet communicator badge or you know because i i think if I think we're right, aren't we, that we established that she wears a Starfleet communicator. Is that right? Or, or does yes. she still use her Klingon one? No, no, she, she wears her stuff. Because that's, that's probably the only insignia, Starfleet insignia yeah. she's got. Correct. Um, right, so he's, you can see, you can literally see his train of thought as he kind of goes from one conclusion to the next. So the first conclusion is, uh-oh, Klingon, uh. Then he goes, oh, hold on, Starfleet, mm, okay. And then he sees the, the, the Starfleet badge, and he's like, hmm. So his, his posture relaxes slightly, um and as you approach he's like oh uh, you know can i help you we are on uh, official business we demand to speak with your captain uh demand is a strong word klingon That's strong great. words are the only words i have <laughs> perfect this is and what is your business with our captain our business is between us and your captain yeah uh, he sort of looks at. He looks at. Um, looks at um, very well. I'll allow me to speak with my superior, um, and I will. I will be back. I will be back momentarily. And he he turns. He he hits a uh, uh, the, the airlock. Um, so again, this is this this is the base's external airlock, basically. So he he says, you know, I sh I'll I will return in a moment. And he um he goes inside the hatch, and the hatch closes behind him. Um, and there's a there's a, a, a couple of minutes where you're kind of waiting around, um, and after a couple of minutes, a um, the, the hatch opens again, and the, the original guy um, um, comes out, and he's accompanied with another Orion male. Um, now, Kalish, um, you have some uh, knowledge of um, uh, Orion insignia um hierarchy given you know given your um experience with the orions in your history yeah. um and giara do we know have, we haven't really established your previous uh trill no, we hosts haven't. have we, we haven't so i'm going to throw in a little gm a little gm fiat here and say that one of your um, previous hosts and we won't I'm, go I'm in any down, any <laughs> What we'll say is that one of your previous hosts um, was somebody who had um, was was a um, a, a trader, yeah, um, in some capacity, and has, has had had ex, uh, extensive experience with Orions. And both you and Kalish um, at the same moment kind of realised that um, this guy who's come out is is basically the the ship's first officer so he's not the captain mm -hmm. um, but his insignia and his um his kind of adornments um tell you that he is a um that he is the essentially the first officer of the ship he's not the captain 
um, and you both look at each other kind of simultaneously and go, you know, mm, first officer. Right, Mike, have you just joined us? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, I completely forgot this was on. Mike. Oh, yeah, man. I know. Well, look, if you We're... don't want to play, just tell me. You don't have, you know, break it to me gently. You don't have to... Um... Worst yeah. excuse. Have you put your clocks back? <laughs> uh, yeah, about a week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, you, you, if you feel okay just to play catch up, uh, you'll 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 get yeah, what, what's no, no, going no, on. I'm fine. I'm just uh, as I say, I just again, I just completely lost track. I'd say I'd say you could listen to the audio, but let's face it, nobody does that. So, yeah, hey, I listened to it today, mate. <laughs> oh, good. Well done, but it's, it's uh, Mike. Excuse, Mike, but... just to catch you up, mate. Um, we went back and we reinvestigated the mask. You know, that had a shock um, quality to it. The hockey mask, right? Okay. Um, and we've determined that it, it had some pretty high tech on there. Um, and now we are approaching the Orion ship because we would like to question the captain. That's essentially what we've yeah, accomplished. That's essentially... I think you find I discovered <laughs> high tech. <laughs> <laughs> are you the one that, is, 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 is that why you're laid flat out on the floor then? Yeah. <laughs> you've, practic- you've discovered practically how, how it works. Not too far from the truth. Yeah, <laughs> that's the good thing about red shirts. So the way, the, they're the way that the um, they're there to show you how the monster of the week works. Exactly. <laughs> right. So um, at, you're at that. As I said, you're in the waiting area, and this, um, as I say, the little the little guy who was on the door has disappeared inside. A couple of minutes later, he comes back, and he's got this guy with him, and he's uh, he's uh, he he sort of approached. He again, he 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 does exactly the same train of thought that the other guy had, i.e. First thing he sees is Klingon, and he kind of goes, whoa. And then he goes, hmm, Starfleet, hmm. And then he goes, hmm, Klingon wearing Starfleet insignia. And, of course, he knows that this base, you know, they know how this base works. Yeah. So he kind of, okay, again, his, his demeanor towards you all seems to be uh, relatively cooperative. Um, and he approaches you, um, oh, I am I am Jarl. Are you the captain? Um, um, I, am, I am the first officer. No, we want the captain. Sorry, I, maybe my, maybe you didn't quite understand my friend's accent. Captain, <laughs> I, I, I can see where how you made a mistake. Captain, first officer, they're very similar, but we wanted the captain. Well, I, much as I'd, I'd, I'd uh, like to assist you in your, uh, and he looks at the Klingon again. He looks at Kalish again, and he's like, as, as much as I'd like to assist you and your uh, colleagues. Um. I'm afraid the captain is not aboard. Not aboard. Could you tell us where we may be able to find the captain? You see, we have a line of inquiry that uh, only your captain can answer. He says, one moment, and he, he turns to his um, subordinate, i.e. The, the guy who's on the door, and he, he speaks to him in Orion. And, and Giara, um, again, I, I'm, I'm going to assume you... Your previous host um, has some knowledge of the language, and again, the way with trills it works is you, you, you remember, in, you know, you kind of hazily remember enough to, to get the gist. Kalish again may have have some experience, but basically, he he, he essentially tells the bloke to um, he says, you know, go and attend to that. Says, there so are again, four officers here. You told me there were only three. Yeah. Now he he basically interestingly he tells this guy to um, essentially tells him to get lost. So he he basically tells him to go off and do something. He says, I, you know, I need you to go and um, you know, flush the the hydro vents on deck four or something. And this guy just, sir, he says, you heard me, go. Mm. And and this with with a look of surprise, a little look of um, surprise, this guy you know opens the hatch and he he he, he plods off. And sure, if the hatch closes, and then the guy then um, looks around and he says, are we being recorded? Um, he, he gestures towards the um, sub- surveillance camera that's on the bulkhead, which obviously, you know, obviously you know is there because you viewed the footage. And he says, "Are we being recorded?" I will, um, I will take out a sort of uh, some sort of remote device or something, oh, and I will yeah. beep it, and I will say, "We are no longer being recorded." Right. He says, "He says, I must speak carefully because I need to." Maintain the illu- uh, an illusion of. Uh, I need to maintain a position of authority with my crew. I tell you honestly that Captain Tijenko has not been seen aboard 
since yesterday. She left the ship. We saw her leave the ship uh, with a crewmate of ours on a errand, shall we call it, which she did not see fit to share with me. Now, I tell you this in com- I tell you this away from the ears of my crew because I have to tell you that the captain has been acting strangely for the last few days. She's missed planning meetings. We, as you know, our presence here is um, driven by this sporting event that is due to happen. We, we stand to make much latinum from um, this event. Our, our, you know, casino is stands ready to welcome uh, crew, crew, crewmates, star, Starfleet and Klingon alike. He says, not entirely convincingly about the Klingon bit, <laughs> but he says, he says the, the captain should be um, leading us in this time of great profit. But she has been behaving out of sorts for the last couple of days, t- to the extent that myself and my seconds had already discussed removing her from command. And if you know anything of the Orion way, you know that this is not a, a measure that we would take lightly. And um, again, both uh, uh, Kalish and Giara know that this to be true, because despite appearances, um, Orion females tend to be the, the, the ones in charge. Um, although there's this image of the Orion slave women and all this, this is essentially a, a kind of an... Um, it's a convenient falsehood that the Orions have, have perpetuated. And it, it's generally the case that it's the Orion women who are in charge of um, certainly the ships and the operation. So again, for this guy to be openly saying that they were considering kind of taking command from her, um, that speaks to the seriousness with which he's dealing, he's treating this situation. So, Steve, a couple of questions. Um, firstly, yeah, yeah. did we or did we not see on the security camera her returning to the ship? Yes, you did. We did. And my second question then is, um, do I trust this guy's words? Can I get some sort of um, – does he seem to be lying? Does he seem to be okay, so believing what I'm get, his words? Right, what you can do is if you'd like to make me um, an insight and security role, yeah. um, I'm going to make it a difficulty of two, but I'm gonna okay. get, again, Giara can assist you. So again, Giara can do exactly the same um, insight and security. Um, so as I say, you're going to get a read on him because you're right. Again. He's um, yeah. Um, you just the one for me. Right. That's fine. That's good enough. So Giara, if you want to just roll one dice, one d twenty. You know, just roll straight one d twenty, and your target will be the total of. There you go. Perfect. perfect. Okay. Perfect. So. Um, Yes, you, you, um, all of your instincts, and again, you know, Klingon warrior instincts, uh, you know, are, you, you put your, you put your, um, the, you put the trust of your life into your instincts, right? You, Klingons live by, um, instinct, instinct, and, um, you, everything you know tells you that this guy is, is being on the level. And Giara, you also, from your experience with them, uh, you know, you, you spent many years, um, in some capacity dealing with Orions and you know that this guy you, you're both convinced that he is telling you the truth and his all of his actions um, in terms of the way that he's dealt with this and again keeping this you know away from the ears of anyone from his crew um, yeah you're, you're pretty sure that he's telling you the truth or at least the truth as he knows it yeah. yes yeah so again, well, I, will you know, say, I will say to him then um, well we have reason to believe your captain returned to the ship and I will quote the time Okay. In fact, you to be honest, you can show him the recording because you've got the. I can. I don't know that I want to show that hand right away. Okay, I just that's fine. Have reason to believe, yeah. and, and if what he needs proof, then I'll show yeah. it. What Understood. To him is that we believe the captain's on the ship, and yeah. it would be useful if he were to allow a um, a, a customs inspection um, to allow us some deep um, scanning equipment to find. Because we oh. think that she mm. has been killed. She's been killed on his ship. Mm. Okay. If, if you facilitate that within the hour, we can come on, um, do some, do some um, without prejudiced um, scanning of the ship to make sure that where we to locate the body. Even though you know it's probable that it was a changeling that came on earlier 
and swapped. Why don't they do that? Okay. That's so right. he's he is n really reluctant. Really, and I'm going to emphasise that again. He's really reluctant to give you unfettered access to his ship because whatever happened, whatever you you know about the Orions, there'll be stuff on that ship they don't want you knowing about. Whether that be slaves or whether that be um, that's what I said, without, without prejudice, we we would. Um, know, what he does say to you is, he said, he said, okay, uh, he says, look, I ca if if I were to agree to this. Then my my I would expect my second officer to have me thrown out of an airlock. What I will do to well, what I will give you is my first of all I will give you my pledge um, that, to the best of my knowledge, the captain did not return to the ship at the time you have you have stated. Several crew members we you know we have records of the crew members who've come and gone. And I will provide you with those records, firstly, to prove to you that the captain left the ship at, let's say, I don't know, 1,700 hours. I'm just pulling that out of thin air. 1,700 hours and did not return to the ship that night. I, can, I will show you our access logs, firstly. In addition, I'm willing to offer you access to the captain's um, correspondence, uh, to the captain's private terminal as an initial aid to your investigation. If the captain has not been found or has not made her presence known by the time that the, um, that the match, that the game has concluded, that the hockey match has concluded, because, you know, that is our purpose of being here, then I will reconsider. But I cannot give you the access you request. However, I will cooperate with you as much as I can. And again... Um, you both know, and again, colleagues, you know, you know that um, this, again, is quite a significant um, yeah. offer that he's making. Because you can understand, again, you, you know, you're a security officer, you're a Klingon security officer, and you've dealt with contraband, you've dealt with smugglers, you know. Yeah. And you can understand that he knows that if, if you go, whatever, whatever Osterhagen says, you know, he doesn't really want Federation personnel poking around in his in his hidden holds and all the rest of it yeah i was um, under no illusion he'd let us onto his ship yeah, willingly yeah. having said that the fact that he's willing to give you access to that other information yep. is quite significant because again if you've got access records of his personnel coming and going mm -hmm. then firstly you will have a you will have actually have a record of every member of that crew if anyone else is missing. exactly and also um access to her correspondence you know her kind of data terminal effectively yeah mm -hmm. again that's that's kind of yeah you don't know what else you might find but that's quite a big yes. deal we, we can start with that and then and build on it fair enough yes he's, he, you can tell that he's obviously his big concern is this this uh, hockey match is a big earner for them as i said that they're going to be opening i mean one other thing you could consider guys as well of course is that the hockey match is due to happen basically the next day, given where we are in the sort of rough timeline, the hockey match is due to happen the next day. Um, and so obviously once the hockey match is on, the, the ship will be open anyway. So of course what you could do is you could put covert, you could put people on the ship covertly anyway, because they're going to literally be opening the ship up to allow people to come on and use the casino um, facilities and the restaurant. Because again, these ships are, are, are basically fitted out not only for smuggling and for commerce, but they also have, you know, um, that they're there as, as traveling sort of entertainment centers. So they've got, like I say, a casino and there'd be a rest, there'd be restaurants and bars on the ship. So yeah. if all else fails, you can just, you know, send a few, a few of your security personnel on in, in disguise and they can have a good old poke around then. So you're not really losing much by giving him, um, you know, by going with him. But anyway, I just wanted to make it quite clear that this seems to be quite a significant, um, offer from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we will cool. say well, we appreciate your cooperation. Fine. So what he does is he um um he so he disappears onto the ship for a couple of minutes, comes back with a um uh, a terminal like a, 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 a essentially a data pad, um and he gives you the power.
And on the page, um, uh, what you see in the access logs, essentially what this is, a, is like a biometric scanner whereby obviously everybody who comes onto the ship, uh, certainly the crew, have a... The, the, the ship knows their biometrics, so what it does is, as as they you know they they open the, the airlock, it scans them to make sure who they are before it allows them on. It's quite a simple security measure. Um, you know, Starfleet um, ships and uh, bases do use the same technology, um, and you you you're able to sit and trawl through the records, and sure enough, you can quite clearly see um, the um, captain and the Orion who you suspect was disguised as the Andorian, uh, that yep. you can match the time stamp with your video footage that you've already got. And you, you can say with, with certainty that you can, you can see that the captain Tijenko leaves the ship with this Orion who we'll call Bral, uh, B-R-A-L, um, for no other reason than give him a name. So this Orion Bral and her, um, leave the ship as you expected, like I say, seventeen ten or whatever the night before, mm-hmm. and she, don't, neither he nor she, are there. Are then picked up on the biometric record from that time following. Okay, is there someone being picked up at the time that we saw her return? Okay. So you look at the um, exactly. So you look at your video footage, and and the time stamp on there is let's say it's like twenty three hundred or something. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm kind of picking those numbers out of thin there, but let's say twenty three hundred. Um, so what you see is that the um, uh, looking at your camera, um, you can see you can see the, um, uh, the the figure who you believe to be Tijenko, um approaches. She comes to the ship, um, and out on the timestamp on her um, on the um, uh, door, however, there is a uh, uh, there is a biometric pattern. But it's um, the biometric pattern of somebody called Gial. So it's not actually the biometric pattern doesn't register as her, even though you can on, on your display to the best of your, you know, and again, bearing in mind, uh, you know, it's not the best picture, you know, it's not the greatest picture, but you, you know, you can clearly see it's her. However, the biometric scan registers her as somebody completely different. As G, uh, the name is Gial and it is like ships, let's say, you know, engineer third class or something. Yeah. Steve, um, can I, Looking at the biometric scanner, um, I yeah. want to find another occurrence of GR either leaving or returning, and then fast forward to our security footage to see what that person looks like in reality. Okay. Ooh, so you, um, yeah, exactly, and um, that's very, very good. So you, um, you, you do exactly that. So again, you're, you're um, going through the terminal fo- footage, and according to the biometric records, GR has never left the ship whilst it's been in dock. Okay. So there's no record of GR leaving the ship, and according to the um, biometrics, the only the only access you've got for GR is her um, entering and leaving engineering um, several times a day during the time the ship's been docked here. Um, he's he's only given you the records, obviously, for the period that the ship's been docked here. Yeah, um, and all you can see is that she seems to report for her shift at you know 0800 hours in the ship's engineering department and then like she leaves you know let you know lunch, essentially leaves for lunch but doesn't leave the ship leaves the engineering department um her biometric access is picked up somewhere else on the ship so again she's essentially leaving her workstation going for some lunch coming back to her workstation going back to her cabin so you've got you've got biometrics of her cabin access and this is this is quite clear through the records so the only instance you've got of her accessing the external airlock is um when she apparently returned to the ship on the video footage that you've got which obviously doesn't seem to tie up with what you're looking at would a biometric scan um be able to differentiate between twins Ah, excellent question um it may not depending on the um because obviously if they're identical Identical twins twins, and again you know sort of assuming that you know generalizing that human and orion biology is similar in that regard um so you'd suspect that it should be able to distinguish because biometrics are meant to be um are meant to be you know um a good security measure yeah Yeah, essentially so even even um identical twins should in theory have some variation and again also you know the records that you've got 
there's no no mention of her having a twin on the crew. She's you know it's her and that's it on the she's she's one of the ship's engineering team. And again, everything else you've seen from the biometrics tells you that she's in as you'd expect going to work, going back to a cabin, going up for something to eat, going back, to, going back. She hasn't left the station at all, and and she's not the only one who hasn't left the ship at all. Um, the ship's crew, I think we said, was about forty odd. Um, and of the crew, there's only um, about 18 of them have left because, you know, some of them, you presume, are um, uh, off, off, you know, moving cargo and so on and so forth. But mm-hmm. so it's certainly not on you. You know, she's not the only member of the crew who hasn't left the ship, if that makes sense. Yeah, she's according to the biometric the... record, she's not left the ship. According to the biometric. No, that's not what I'm saying. Is she on the ship? At the moment. She, well, again. You'd have to ask the the first officer because the the biometric record he's given you is only is, mm. is a record, and according to that record she is. But obviously, if she, you'd have to ask him if she's on the ship right now, you'd have to ask him. But as far as you can tell from the biometric record, the person who entered the hatch at the time your video suggests that the captain returned was this Gial. But then, according to everything else you've seen, she's never left the ship. Have you, can you compare her biometrics with the captain's? Um, you is can, she, yeah, because you've got the both. You've got both their biometric patterns, and there is no correlation. No, no sort of like height, weight, height, weights, um, build. Uh, no, not similar in any way. No, so G- Gial is um, uh, smaller than because Dijenko is um, five five foot ten ish, mm. so um, quite tall, um, well muscled. Um, you know, and so on, uh, and and Gial is is five six ish, um, pretty you know again pretty well built given that you know physically works in like a physical um, yeah um, you know physical physical job, um, but there's you know certainly at face value there's no nothing to compare them that you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, confuse the two of them um, in a lineup certainly. Steve, was there time? When the first officer went to get this data pad, was there any time for him to uh, doctor it, alter it at all, or did it seem like he went, fetched it, and came straight back? Your experience would tell you that he didn't have time to doctor it. Okay. Um, so it's possible that they had prepared a doctored version, of course, in advance, but um, he was only gone for about three minutes, which is, yeah. you know, he probably, it, you know, from what you know, he's probably literally walked up the gangway. He's probably got an office that, you know, like, like first officer will have an office probably gone to his office downloaded the data and, and returned with it okay um, so I, you, you're pretty sure he's he's gone and got it straight away i think I, I would say to him that um his his technology needs an overhaul because it's glitching and i will point out this um abundant error which is you know showing this crew member returning at this point and yep. yet her never leaving the ship and okay, seeing so- what he has to say so he uh, right. So he'll he'll come back when you sort of um, summon him because basically the, the the sentry guy has reappeared at the door, um, and so when you, when you've had a chance to look at this, and I, I take it you've probably gone off to a, a an, an office and okay, looked so, at this yeah, rather I mean, than the situation wrong. Yeah, then don't worry about that. Don't yeah. worry about that. Um, I figured he was there for questioning. I don't want. I don't want to. Keep you can you can you can you can get him back quickly because uh, again that's absolutely fine. Um, all I'm saying is you you've gone off and, and done a bit of investigation and you've you probably uh, it's probably reasonable to assume you'd go back with questions. Um, the other okay. thing he's given you though before we get to that is don't forget he's also given you um, some uh, uh, correspondence. Yes, yeah. so let, let's work on that sort of stuff before we do go back to him. Can I um, set a security officer, maybe Elias or or someone lower even to um, Log. So I want them to go through the whole of the footage that we have on the on the airlock and yep. cross reference it with every biometric. And I want them to to uh, pair it all together, to tag it all together, and to flag every single anomaly. So, for example, when this Orion, who was looking like an uh, Andorian, left the ship, yep. that would be a, an obvious flag. Um, yep. And uh, th- this other one about you know we see the captain returning, but it wasn't her on the biometrics. So I want all of these sort of logged. It'll probably take a bit of time, but um, I want hey, well, some. The, the 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 lucky um, the lucky guy who gets picked on is uh, is crewman Marconi, um, <laughs> and he's he's uh, Elias's um, sort of bunk mate. Effectively, he's like he's so he's like a, actually he's like Elias's kind of mate. Uh, he's, he's like. 
um, they tend to do duty shifts together. Um, so he, you, you kind of, um, he's, but he, he's currently on, uh, on duty. So you give him a, you give him a, uh, the task, um, and he goes off, uh, you need to do this in two phases, do a quick yep. facial recognition run of, of the, uh, video logs. Yep. Um, and that will give, give you some actual flags as it were. Yeah. Um, and also a full visual. So okay. That, so that might give us a, a kind of a quick win. Yep. Whilst we're waiting for something more in depth, if that makes sense. Okay, so he goes off to do that. He's absolutely happy to do that. You, you give him his instructions, um, and he um, he goes off to do that. Now, um, so the next thing that you were given by the captain is um, communi- is communications logs. And um, so, uh, is there any what what sort of uh, how, to, how to approach this? What are you what are you, I guess you're just going to go through it and see if anything jumps out as odd is that fair to say what's the last entry okay last entry that's a good place to start sorry mike did you have a question yeah um is there any and this is probably way off base anyway but is there any sign of um because the the klingon that's missing is female am i right yeah Yeah. right okay okay we still haven't found have we We, she's still still missing yeah still missing yeah um, who, who refresh my memory? Who was the body we found? Was it a, a Klingon? It was or the a... Orion crewman, whose name yeah. you, you assume was Bral, because he was the Orion who left the ship with uh, the captain, mm. and he was the one who was, as far as you could tell from the video, was disguised as an Orion, as an Andorian. Uh, but he's that he's the guy who hasn't his again his biometric pattern has not been just to, registered just, back, and you could you can easily um, just you can easily confirm. That the dead crewman is in fact crewman Brawl from the Orion ship. So, so, oh, so I'm just trying to get my head around this. The Klingon, uh, the Orion that we found was disguised as an, uh, an Andorian, correct? correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, if and the Orion is dead, so could we possibly suggest that our errant captain is dressed as an, uh, an Andorian? Possibly. You've got, you've got no evidence of that, but it's possible. No. Well, that could explain why she's not been seen, which is yeah. a fair point. Also, okay. the, the captain and the disguised Orion met yeah. up with someone who also looked to be an Andorian. Um, so looking through this this footage, it would be great to see if there was another Orion crew member dressed as an um, Andorian. And okay. you know, there's so, a bunch of them out on the out on the station. So you can brief, you can brief crewman Marconi on that, and he goes off yep. to a terminal. Um, he's on the I guess he's probably on the bridge, and he's like starts going through it. But obviously, it's going to take him a little bit of time. Um, so you start going through now. You you asked me about the last message. Now, the last message from um, so the last message on. Um, the system of Parja. Now, some you can see that some messages may have been, uh, should we say, discreetly removed, and you suspect those are to do with probably bribes paid to somebody in Starbase operations to get them a nice docking bay and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But but there is a lot of to and fro in. And the last message that she sent, or the last message that she, okay, so the last message that she um, sent was. Um, two uh, was actually a payment, and you can see that she's actually she sent a payment to a um, now on the promenade. I want to call it the promenade. Um, on the promenade, there is a Ferengi restaurant. So, as we've established on the base, there's this open area, um, and it's got all these kind of um, it's got these you know uh, restaurants and eateries and all this kind of the Galleria. And so, the, interesting, the last thing that she sent is a payment of, uh, you know, a, a, a kind of relatively small amount of lat- latinum um, to this Ferengi establishment. And it appears to have been what looks, it looks basically like a food order. So, essentially, looking at it, it looks like she's paid an invoice. She's asked to have some food delivered. And um, this... Um, seems to have um this all looks slightly odd but also it's interesting to note that one of what on this list of items as you, Kalish, as you're going through this you're kind of looking at this and it ca- catches you off guard a bit at first because you're thinking you know what is this this seems a bit of an odd thing but when you look at it you realize that there's actually 
um, a, a meal on the order is a Klingon meal. So mm-hmm. she's actually ordered Klingon food. And so she's basically paid this Ferengi establishment for a couple of meals, one of which is a Klingon meal. Okay, and so a was, number of meals, and not just not she wasn't just ordering food for herself. It looks like no, this was this was not this. As far as you can tell, this was not for an order to be delivered to the ship. And again, don't forget your biometrics, um, you, the biometric information that you've seen. You've n- you've not seen anybody else um, come to the ship, and you can you can get Marconi to cross reference that with the timing. Yeah. But th- she's basically essentially, she, I'm gonna say she's like paid for a delivery. It's and I don't want to you know trivialize it but the point is she's literally yeah. sent a, sent an order to this ferengi restaurant um for food to be delivered somewhere on the station does it have a delivery one of the address meals somewhere? i beg your pardon does it have a delivery address where, where to send it, the food it, to it does not but you could you know obviously you could talk to the ferengi restaurant because yep. presumably they've had to deliver it yeah um and yes and so that seems to be the, the the rest of the communication that you've seen. Certainly, the communication for the last couple of days, um, as sort of ties in with what um, uh, Jarl was telling you, the first officer was telling you that, you know, he said how her behaviour had been odd for the last couple of days. Well, there's no real communications from her outgoing over the last couple of days prior to her disappearance, with the exception of this um, order for food that's been requested. <laughs> And really, when about um, was this this order? Was so this, this was um, again. Uh, this would have been last night. Um, um, probably um, this would have been last night, late late last night. So basically, after the Klingon had disappeared, after the Klingon yeah. goalkeeper had gone, and yeah. it seems to be after the time that the, um, as far as you can see, that the captain had returned to the ship. Yep. So okay. she's placed the order from the ship, and it's gone to this Ferengi restaurant for them to deliver food, uh, including a Klingon um, food order. Okay, so we wouldn't be allowed to have a look at the whole ship, but would we be able to have a look at the captain's quarters? To see if we can help find um, the questions. I mean, you can food. ask him, but I, I, you can certainly ask him, um, and it depends how far you want to push it with him, um, because, again, he's very reluctant to allow um, non, you know, non-crew members on board. And, again, you can make life difficult for him, um, and you can push it, you know, and again, as I said, there are there are ways and means that you can do it, um, but I suspect he's probably going to um, resist that at least at the moment because again, he doesn't really want you poking around on his ship. Mm-hmm. Um, no. He's been rattled enough by the fact that his captain's apparently disappeared. Yeah. Um, so, but again, that's that's certainly you. You certainly can ask him, and you certainly can try and persuade him. And if all else fails, you can you know, seize the ship and you can, you know, you can sort of do it by force um, if, if that's what you want to do. I think he might be less inclined to help us if we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, until we have dire need, then we'll... Um... Mm. Mm. Okay, so... Um, yeah, going to this Ferengi restaurant is definitely um, a hot lead, I think, um, to find out where this food has been delivered to. Um, in fact, I think we should send someone straight away because time is probably of the essence. Um, I, yeah, I'm willing to go myself. I think. Anyone else? I'll go. Yeah. I'll go with you, Karen. I mean, we can okay. we can all go unless there's any unless. Uh, or does someone want to go back and speak to the the first officer about the discrepancies we've come across? Or, or... So two of us can go and do that, and two of us can go to the restaurant. Yeah, should we do that? Mm-hmm. We, can, we can do a, a Columbo. Yeah, and another. <laughs> okay, so right, so sorry. So, um, who's going to speak to the first officer, and who's going to the restaurant? I think uh, myself and Kaz are going to the restaurant, and then yeah. Giara and um, David are going to the first officer. Okay, so who 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 would you? I mean, I'm 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 happy to deal with either. For, how how do you want to? Who, who do you want to deal with first? I'm quite happy to do. Should we do the first officer first? Cool, let's do that. Okay, so, um, right, so Guerra and Osterhagen return to the um, docking bay. Uh, you you part company, um, uh, and uh, Kaz and Kalish head for a turbo lift to head off to the Galleria. Uh, the you you two head back to the uh, Orion ship, and um, you 
uh, as you approach the, the 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 airlock, the kind of there's there's another nondescript Orion. Um, so I, I will punch my communicators so that the others can hear yep. what we are saying to them. Yep. Okay. As a one-way conversation. Okay, fine. So, um, Kalish, uh, you, 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 you and Kaz, your communicators beep, and you, you acknowledge it, then you can hear Osterhagen just talking, and you obviously pick up on the fact that he's opened a channel just so you can listen to what's going on. Um, and you, so, on the, over the, so basically, you approach this guy, and he's like, you know, yeah, you know, can I help you? And you said, so, you, said, you know, we're here to see, um, we, we need to speak to, um, to uh, what was his name, Jarl. Uh, Jarl. We need to speak to Jarl on a matter of urgency, right here. And he um, he he goes inside, and um, again, two two minutes later, the first officer comes out again, and he says, "Oh, I, I see you didn't bring your Klingon with you this time. What what can I do for you?" He says, oh, wait, "Wait one moment." And he again turns to his other guy, and again sends him off on an errand. Uh, and again, Giara, you kind of uh, can again you understand enough of the language to. Um, again realize that he's basically getting this guy out of the way um and he says well, you know okay so, so tell me what have you found well first thing says if if this comes up in conversation with your crew we are here on a customs matter if that is good um uh, for, for your just for your um your experience obviously if things go sour um we may need to change that but for the convenience um that is a story i'm prepared to stick to if um, that assists you in not worrying your crew, if that makes sense. Vulcan, you are um, most agreeable. I, I thank you I, for your, I, I I thank you for your understanding. That's why I thought I'd come without the Klingon to, um, uh, to see it from your perspective a little bit. I thank you for your understanding. Um, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm in a difficult... Uh, you will understand that I am in something of a difficult situation with my crew and until we we determine the disposition of the captain um i i must do what i can to preserve calm and order certainly with the with the um the event happening exactly um, and within within believe, believe me that the sound of latinum rattling through our casino will do much to calm the nerves of my crew and we will facilitate as much as possible the easing of that for you. In Your cooperation is, is noted and appreciated. What what can I do for you? Well, we've we've been going through the logs and we found You're some... a lying git. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going through the logs and uh, there's some discrepancies. Um, well, there's some oddities that we 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 well, it's it's probably just uh, you know one of those things. But I just want to clear I up these matters. I assure and, uh, you, I assure you that the record is unaltered. And it was taken directly from our security system. Okay, so well, what, what, dis- what, do, what do you mean? But what discrepancy do you mean? Um, my, uh, my mind's gone completely blank. I have no that's idea. Okay. Where you're well, well, no, where you're you, that's fine, because you um, obviously, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just tell him what, because obviously we've we've covered that already. So yeah. you 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 tell him that on the video, you, he, you you can show him a still. You don't have to show him the footage. But you show him a still of what quite clearly appears to be Captain Tijenko. There's a timestamp on it. Yeah. Um, and you say to him, look, you can see here, this is when we believe the captain returned. To the- do, you, do you concur? And he says, well, it certainly looks like the captain. I, I don't remember her wearing that. I don't remember her ever wearing anything so um, pedestrian. Because if you remember, she was wearing like a robe, like a, a cloak um, when she came back to the ship. He says, but that certainly looks to be the captain from from this image. And then he, and you say, well, if you look at the and here's the you, you bring up the um, uh, the biometric recording and you say you can see here, according to the biometric, this was actually somebody called Gial. And he, he sort of looks at it and he, he does a he does like a double take because he sort of looks at it once with a bit of a, you know, you're, you're, you're obviously mistaken. And he sort of looks at it again and he goes, this is not possible. I know Crewman Jial. She is a, a, a junior member of the engineering staff. I, I, I can assure you that she has not had clearance to leave the ship whilst we have been here. Her, her, her position is such that she needs to um, work to ac- uh, accumulate 
fed it before she was allowed to um, leave the ship and fraternize with those of other species. And I can assure you that in her limited time aboard our ship, she has not reached this level. So there is no way that her senior officer would have allowed her to leave the ship. And you know, he says, here, he says, hold on, here, here. And he shows you the biometrics. He says, you can see here. No, no, no. You, can... you said limited time a lot. When did she come on board your ship? She's she's only been on this ship for six months. She hasn't a, a, she hasn't acquired enough leave time yet to be allowed to leave the ship unescorted. And oh, you can see here, here's the biometrics. You can see here she's been in her quarters and she's been in her place of her duty station and she's been in on the mess deck and that's the only place she's been. I, I cannot explain why this, this this system says that you know she has returned to the ship, but but according to this, she's never left the ship. So she says, you know, this is obviously a mistake. There's obviously a fault in our... How long did you say your captain was feeling and acting strange? Uh, a couple of days. A couple of, a couple of days. She's been acting a couple of days, although she's only been missing since yesterday, basically. But Okay. So he's, he's, he seemed quite um, genuinely sort of... Um, uh, and again, Giara, you know, again, I'll, I'll keep banging that drum of, of your experience with this species, <laughs> but... You know, again, he seems to be, he's, he's frankly, he's, he's obviously having a very bad day at the moment um, because he's presumably having to organize, you know, all the other stuff that's going on. And he, he literally cannot understand. Why doesn't he, why doesn't he just call her to the, call her to the um, airlock? Who, uh, uh, you, you can, yeah, you can suggest mm. that if you want. Because then he's okay. to her like that would prove that she's physically on the ship. Yeah, he says, OK, he says, he says, you're right. So that's, that's, yes, yes, indeed. Wait, wait one moment. And he, he, he actually taps a communicator because he's got a, a communicator on his, you know, on his wrist. Um, and he, he says, yeah, hook it up. And he says something in Orion. And um, again, Giara, you, you haven't tipped your hand that you understand no. a bit of the language. But yeah, he, he says, you know, uh, en- engineers, mate, third class, GR, report to um, the main airlock. And sure enough, f- five minutes pass during which this guy is kind of, you know, a bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm and gonna make, I'm going to make small talk about the match and about, you know, just, just yeah. to ease him, ease him a little bit. Um, and he's, he's slightly dis- discomforted by this, given that a Vulcan is actually engaging in small talk, but of course he doesn't know your, um, you know, doesn't know your, your deal. But he's, again, he's a little bit discomforted by this, by the fact that you're kind of having a chat with him. He's like, really? Um, but he, you know, he's, he's, he seems, he seems, um, um, to yeah, <laughs> he seems, you know, he seems pleasant enough. He's, he's again, he's obviously having a bad day. But sure enough, a couple of minutes later, anyway, the hatch opens and out comes this female Orion. Now, she does not look much like any female Orion you've seen, because most of you in Starfleet are only used to seeing the um, the female Orions that they like you to see, i.e. the stereotypical Orion slave girl. Um, and this, you know, she's an attractive woman, um, but she's uh, quite young. You, you guess she's probably, you know, uh, I don't know, mid twenties. Um, and as as per the um, information you had earlier, she certainly fits the description. She's, you know, five foot, five foot seven. Um, her hair is sort of tied back unglamorously in a very functional hairstyle, and she's wearing um, uh, kind of what would it be the equivalent of coveralls. So she's wearing like you know work clothes essentially. Um, and you can see that she's got some, um, you know, um, her hands are kind of uh, quite grubby where she's obviously been rooting around in uh, in the ship's innards, if you like. Um, and she's like, uh, you, you, you asked to see me, um, sir? And she looks, you know, she sort of it seems, almost seems reluctant to step out of the hatch as well because she comes to the hatch. But she's like, you, you wanted to see me, sir? Oh, yes. The says, yes, yes, the yes, Joel, Joel. T- tell these, um, tell our friends here from... Starfleet. Um, how long have you been? Have you? How long have you been with us on the ship? Uh, I've been. Um, I've been on board for, for for six for six months now, sir. And, and what is your duty station? You know, well, I, I I work in the engineering department. I'm um, you know, I'm I'm responsible for the uh, for the coolant system on the the port nacelle. And it's like, and and you know, tell these tell these gen tell these uh, these these people. Have you left the ship during our time here at this human outpost? No, sir. I'm I'm. As you know, I'm not allowed. Uh, uh, maybe next next time we visit, I will have accumulated enough uh, enough credits to um, to to take leave. But no, sir, I have been I've I've been attending to my duties as as required. And he says, "Well, well, you know, what, what, what would, you, would you like to ask or anything?" Yeah, and and Giel, answer answer truthfully. So you know, if you want, is there anything you want to ask her? Uh, 
So we're, we're here from customs. Um, is, is there... Have you come to the hatch to collect a, uh, a laundry basket? And she looks confused. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what is laundry basket? And I, I give a description of the basket. Okay. So. Ah, uh, no, sir. Uh, my, my duties only require me to attend to the engines. I, I have nothing to do with, um, with um, material fabrication or to do with uh, the cleaning facilities. No, sir, I'm, I'm an engineer. Oh, excellent. That, that's, that's clear. That, that. Thank you for your assistance. Sorry, we, uh, we must have a case of mistaken identity. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, so may I, may I go? And, and um, GL, yeah, yes, yes, go back to your duties. And she, she trots off and he says, well, you can quite clearly see that's not the same woman who was on the, the feed. She looks no. nothing like the captain. That is curious. Mm. Um, well, we will continue our investigations. I would suggest that you do some... Uh, covert investigations of yourself within your ship um, because something is amiss and rest, rest assured um, and he, he looks at your um, he looks at you and he looks at both of you and looks at your you can see he's kind of trying to look understand your rank um, 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 insignia he says rest assured captain which he's obviously got it wrong um, rest assured captain I will I will I will be making immediate um revisions to our security processes and i would ask um if you do have any updates on our captain's disposition that you you advise me personally i i will um, I have my, i'll put my hand out uh, to shake his hand and put my other hand over it yeah uh, give it a really strong um shake right I, i'm going to obtain his dna from the shake obviously because <laughs> of course you are because I, I want to check to see if he is a proper Orion and he's not something other than. Okay, that's fine. That is that is perfectly reasonable. Um, and he 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 sort of shakes your hand, and again he's again slightly. Um, you can see he's still slightly puzzled by you because again you're not like Vulcans he's, he meets normally. I mean, um, he says first name and say, um, uh, whatever his first name was. Um, we will we'll, uh, just Joel. Yes, Joel. I will get back to you. Oh, and, and um, of course, um, you, you must uh, come and enjoy our facilities when the game is on. And he gives you both, um, essentially gives you both, uh, like, tickets to the casino. So no, you must, you must come and, um, you must come and, um, and uh, enjoy our facilities when, uh, you know, when you're off duty, of course. I understand you, 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 um, you Starfleet types have, uh, you know, have, have strange feelings about, uh, about duty and, and recreation. But you, you must, uh, please, come and, come and, uh, Come and enjoy the facilities, um, but I must now get back to my duties. And he kind of, you know, goes back. Out. And then, we, as you're as you're leaving, um, the the other guy comes out looking a bit confused, but he, he goes back to his post at the at the at the door. Um, so what we'll do is we'll so, skip over. So what I'm also going to do, so let's get back to the customs post yep. loudly, so that the guy can hear. Just yep. to, we don't want to cause the other guy any problems until we need to. Right, right. And he, again, he he genuinely appreciates your cooperation because again. He's in a bit of a bind at the moment, um, but as you say, that's that's appreciated, and I think it's worth noting that that might be a useful contact for you to have in the future, uh, yep. given how, given how you've treated him. You know, you've treated him with respect, and you've um, kind of li uh, lived up to your promise to him that you would um, kind of try and play things down a bit. Um, I, so he, he will... yeah, until we know he's he's not on the level, we must assume he's not on the level. But it's of best course. to probably. You know, kiss his ass a bit just to facilitate. Yeah, no, I think that's perfectly fair. And again, it, it just helps grease the wheels a little bit, you know? That's the word I was in for you. Yeah, there you go. Right, okay. So you guys go back to the customs post. So, uh, or you guys go back to, I guess you're probably going to go, are you going to meet up with the other two eventually? Is that the plan? Well, whilst that's happening, um, obviously, I guess the other guys are going to go to um, the Ferengi place. And if they do this, if they do a similar thing with the communicators, we don't have to come back and talk to each other and tell us what each that's other. That's a, a really good idea. So yes, exactly. So you keep the channel mm. open. Um, right. So you, the other two. So, um, okay. So Kalish and uh, Kaz, you have re arrived on the Galleria. And as we've established, the Galleria is this wide open um, um, arboretum that kind of extends the whole width of the station. If you look at the, um, if you, any of you have got roll 20 open, the Galleria is the, um, it's marked on that map. Uh, Galleria and diplomatic level, it's the first blue level down from the top. It's got a massive windows all the way around it, which look out into space. And the, and the, that area is completely open, was originally open plan. It's now been 
um, fitted out with a, a vast array of um, smaller buildings. There's accommodation buildings, as we've established in previous adventures. There are restaurants, there are bars, there are open areas. There's a big open park area in the central uh, bit of that level. Um, and obviously, it's a very it's where most people go to spend their recreation time as i say there are um, numerous restaurants and there are restaurants from all over so um you you very quickly are able to locate the ferengi restaurant in question and the ferengi establishment in question is a place which is called Br- uh, brint uh, brints b-r-i-n-t-s and you, okay. you you as you as you approach this um establishment it's a it's an open is it, it's got big open is it um how familiar are with it? Is it like a Ferengi chain or is it, do you know what I mean? No, it's just a restaurant. No, it's a it, restaurant. It's, it's just a restaurant. It's not like the Ferengi equivalent of a McDonald's. or uh, a No, not as far as you know. Right. And um, so the, I mean, you don't know much about it. It's possible you might have visited mm. it before, but I probably, certainly that certainly Kalish probably won't have done. Mm. Um, I wouldn't have thought. Um, there's no reason for a Klingon to go over to a, 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 a Ferengi restaurant. Um and it's kind of as you'd expect with the Ferengi. It's all quite tacky looking, and and um, you know, pretty tastelessly um, um, decorated. And inside, there's um, there's there's a, there's tables scattered around with a variety of races. There are some Ferengi eating in there, but there's also some other, probably more adventurous um, humans and other species are, are, are kind of picking up food. And there's a an open plan uh, cooking area at the back. So if you imagine there's a counter. Um, sort of halfway back into the building and then behind that there's a big open plan kitchen and then you can see like lots of ferengis kind of beavering away at, at food and uh, so on and um are there any menus on the table oh yeah yeah, yeah. there are menus on the table yeah but i mean you, to, to order it looks like you have to go up to the counter so there's no i mean you don't see waiters or anything um but there's like a there's like a literally there's a counter with a, a menu above it mm. and um there's like a holographic menu you know in midair effectively kind of so uh, no scrolling through the choices there's no sort of like paper you know paper or card menus um well there, yeah i'm sure there are i mean what's the yeah. 24th I, century yeah. i mean there are menus whether they're made from card or plastic card or um you know hollow yeah. card or whatever but there are menus on the table. So what do you want to do? Do you want to look at a menu or do you want to go to the counter? Um, I'm going to go to the counter and I'm assuming there'll be like a menu list on the table, on the uh, um, on the bar. Yeah. Well, I say there's like a holographic menu kind of yep, rotating in the air above. Mm. It's, ah, hu- ah hu- human. And oh. a, a, a Ferengi approaches you from uh, uh, behind the counter. Um, and hold on a minute. I think I've Steve, got a on, on the walk over... Um, yeah. I would have um, looked up the details for the restaurant to see who the proprietor is. Is it a guy right. named Brint? It is. It is indeed. And if you look in the uh, uh, Discord feed, there's an image of Brint. I can see him there. Um, and he's a uh, yeah. He's the, he's down as the owner and, and operator of Brint's. And Brint's is described as a uh, Ferengi. Um, essentially, it's pre- predominantly a restaurant, so it's a bit unusual because Ferengi's like bars and and so on. But this place mm. is predominantly food. And mm-hmm. it does a combination of um, um, uh, Ferengi dishes along with um, uh, other species. So Klingon food is is on the menu um, because again, this base is a you know human slash or Starfleet slash um, Klingon operation. But there and there are plenty of, of menu choices to cater to all of those choices. And you know, if, if you if you go as far as looking at hygiene ratings, it's sort of average. Um, you know, there's no, there's nothing in the station logs to indicate a problem. There is, however, um, as you, as you're reading up on this thing, there are a couple of, um, security flags have, um, there's been a couple of incidents with security where, um, it's, it's been suggested that this place might be the front for some sort of criminal activity, mm-hmm. but nothing's ever been proven. Um, yeah, and so there, there is a, place, wouldn't you? Yeah, there is a there exactly there is a, a watch uh, notice on the uh, log to say you know um, that that the, the security make um, periodic um, visits, just impromptu visits, just to keep an eye on the place. But they haven't got any real evidence. Uh, and again, station command are trying to be lenient to people because again, that this is this base is a um, um, you know it's a cooperative venture, and obviously the Klingons and, and Starfleet have different opinions on what is tolerable. Yep. Uh, and so again, 
start security are aware of it, but there there's been no real um, you know, concrete criminal mm. activity proven. Um Mike, so uh, have you got an angle or because I I've yeah. got a direction that I've Yeah, got, go for it. Well, I, I was just thinking again. I don't know what your direction is, but I was just going to. I was going to look through the menu and um, find the meal that was sent to on the order, and use that as an in. Uh, what I was going to say to to this Brint fella, I was going to say that we've got a sanction to um, close his restaurant down for a few days to investigate complaints of food hygiene. Obviously, Ooh. that's going to hurt his profits. And when he starts to complain about that, I say, well, you could, there is a way out of this if you tell us where this order was sent to. That'll work. <laughs> it's probably better, better than okay. my so what, 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 In the interests of um, expediency, I think it's fair to say that that works particularly, that works exactly as you'd expect. So this little fellow comes trotting over, ah, like your man's, you know, you want food? What food can I get you for you today? And you say to him, you know, right, I'm gonna let's cut the crap. Um and you lay that on the line and he 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 fights it for about ten seconds until you remind him that the biggest um sporting event of the year is about to happen and that if he does not cooperate with you, then you will make sure that his business is is closed um over that period, you know, and that his staff will all be thrown into the brig. And he rolls over within about, yeah, 10, 15 seconds. He kind of tells you everything, anything you want to know. Um, Ferengis are not brave about this stuff. Profit, and as you said, you, you took exactly the right approach by hitting him in his wallet. And as soon as you mention profit, um, he rolled over without any hesitation. <laughs> so what he tells you is that um, he, con- he confirms that he was approached by um, an Orion woman... And he tries, you can see that he's kind of leering a little bit, because again, being a Ferengi, he can't really help himself. Um, but he, he, email. Email. And he, he confirms that, um, um, although of course she was clothed, which is a no-no with Ferengis, isn't it? <laughs> they like their females to be unclothed. But anyway, he, um, he says that basically she's, she's paid him to, she set up a, um, a, a, if you like, a standing order to deliver food to a, um, there is a, um, uh, a cargo area on the, on the, the base. And she said to him, I want you to deliver food here twice a day. Um, one, um, Orion meal and one Klingon meal or one Klingon suitable meal. So let's be honest. It's probably gah, isn't it? Cause that's the only, that's the only Klingon. You know, it'll, it'll be either, um, uh, what, what's the other one, Mike? What's the the blood uh, blood wing, uh, no, brevet no. lung, something like that? Anyway, no, whatever the no. stuff is, tibius claw, tibius claw. There you go, um, tibius claw. You know, uh, gah. And there's also a, an Orion dish specified, and and that she's paid him for the next uh, week in advance to deliver these a meal twice a day to a particular location, and he's not to tell anybody else about it. Just and. Just... Just as a ran- uh, just as a random thought here, um, how long's the Orion ship reported to be in port for? Well, it's been here for a few days, and yeah, it's mate. due to be here for a few more days. So it could be so another. Essentially, week. the the timings don't really work. Um, yeah. the, the Orion ship is due to leave because um, the 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 hockey match is due to take place tomorrow. And the Orion ship is due to leave the day after right. um, because they've once they've done their business with, you know, they, they, they'll move on to the next one. Mm. But this order of food has been set up for the next five days. Yeah. So that um, really and it, it, he's he, he's literally tripping over himself to cooperate with you um, to the point that it's actually getting a little bit a little bit embarrassing now. Mm. Um, and he's, he, he provides you with the location and he says he tells you the next Delivery is due to go um, in in about an, in about half an hour, and would you like sauce on that? Um, <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll offer you like a, you know three meals for the next year. Any, anything it takes to get you the hell off his property and to not and to not shut him down effectively. Mm. Mm. At this okay. point, um, the other two, I'm assuming, will rejoin you. Um, well, it's probably so... just e- it's probably just easy to go along with the um, 
go along with the with the delivery boy. Well, I, yeah, I don't want to. That then tips off that this Ferengi was, you know, gave away mm. the information. I don't, I don't want to do that to him. I, I think we should. Mm. Well, we need to get that ASAP, Unless right? I think we advertising should. Advertising for delivery people, in which case one of us might want to take a job. <laughs> yeah. Starfleet, Starfleet, Starfleet uh, what was it? Pizza. Starfleet Express. Starfleet. Have you got your own? Have you got your own moped? Though that's the question. <laughs> uh, I've got a hover bike. <laughs> a hover bike. Oh, nice. Awesome. Okay, so um, listen, I reckon we've probably got about fifteen minutes left. Um, so, what would you like to do? Can we scan to see? Um, I think we should all. How many? People... I was going to say, can we well... check to see how many life signs there are in that cargo bay at the moment? Excellent point. You can easily do that. Um, so you call up, yeah, exactly. You can call up station operations. In fact, um, you know, you could actually make this quite easy. Um, so you you call up station operations and um, you say to them, right, I need I need a scan of this area. And again, it's, it, he's given you, you know, told you exactly where it is. So they come back to you within um, kind of, um, um, you know, a minute and say, uh, this is odd. We're picking up. Um, there were two life signs in that cargo hold. It's interesting because that cargo hold's not even online yet. It's not due to come online. Uh, it's it's basically not being used. It's not being utilised. Um, but there's two life signs. We're picking up one Klingon and one Orion life sign. Um, they seem to be. They're certainly alive. Um, I can. I've, I've got them on. I've got them on my scans now. I've recalibrated the scanners. Um, and I can I can beam you straight there, or I can beam them to you. I've got I've got a good lock. Oh yeah, let's beam let's beam there, shall we? Let's, okay. Let's... So, are you armed? <laughs> um, well, I just have two. interest. No, just have interest. I've got two. Okay, that's useful. Steve, I'm always Steve, armed. Steve, Steve. Of course you are. I, mean, I, I wasn't talking to Kalish because, of course, oh, Kalish yes, has got course. thirty-seven Steve. weapons hidden about a person. Steve, I'm going to I'm going to lean lean over the bar and grab the grab the phaser rifle that's under there. Okay, you can do that. That's fine. Yeah, he's, and yes, he's definitely got phaser rifle. It is a Ferengi one because it looks a bit shit because it's yeah. kind of all kind of but I'll gold leave, and I'll, I'll, I'll lean over it enough. and say to the Ferengi, and we won't talk about this as I, <laughs> okay. as I pick the. Pick, Pick the friendly rifle up. Okay, so the the four of you are um, together. So the other two have rejoined you, and sta- you've got station operations on the line. And um, he says, "Okay, um, I'll, I'll put you down just outside the the um, the hold." Um, looks like it's. Um, I, I'm going to turn up. He says, "I can I can turn up um, environmental control." So it's it's the, there is life support, obviously, but he says the lights are on power saving but i'll um i'll dial them up for you so you won't beam into darkness if that's okay uh he's a standby and he says energizing and you feel the, the familiar transporter beam grab you and the next thing you realize as you reappear is that you are um standing outside essentially this looks like a cargo container so there's a you're in a cargo hold which is a, a fairly large open space and there, and there isn't much in here but there is a cargo container um, and as promised by the um, operations manager, um, the lights are on. And as you say, you can look around. There's nobody. There's nobody in this um, area. It's it's a it's a, an empty cargo hold with a storage container. Um, and the storage container's door is closed. Is it sealed? But it does not appear to be. It does not appear to be sealed. No. So it is closed, but it doesn't appear. To, there's, there doesn't appear to be a lock on it. It's just closed. I wonder. Beginning. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. I'll see whether right or wrong. Hmm. Okay. Do we need to roll up new characters after they die? So what do you want to do? Um, um, do we announce that we're here and ask them to come out, or do we open the door? Just open the door. Mm. Okay. Okay, so I take it I take it probably Kalish and Kaz will probably cover the door as you're both armed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so um, which of you wants to open the door? So whilst this is happening, if, we, we, if we've got a sense that it's something bad's happening, um, we're going to uh, try and get to their location ASAP. No, they've already beamed you, they've beamed you down yeah, there yeah. with them. We're all, together. we're all together. So, so you, you, you're down with them. Um, and, um, okay, so we, we, it's probably going to take both Giara and um, 
I'll start open to open the door anyway, because it's like I say, it's like a cargo container, so it's quite a big door. Um, you, you pull this cargo container open, and nothing happens. But it doesn't explode. Do, I want to just um, ask the others whether or not they think that the Klingon has been kidnapped or their lovers. It's going to be one of the two. I reckon. I think they. I think they're lovers. I think that's where. I, yeah, I think. I think the the Orion is helping. Is helping her because she's in trouble or something. Yeah. So the um, you open the container and um, the door opens and this is uh, as you you sort of cover the door and from inside you can hear um, muffled sounds and as you go in um, you see on the floor um, there are two individuals one of which is clearly the Klingon um, Shatai and the other is uh, Tajenko the Orion captain both of them are tied up. Um, they've got um, magna magna binders on their wrists, I thought he was going to um, and they are also gagged, and they are they are also gagged, and they are also um, hooded. Um, and th- the Klingon in particular is struggling, like a you know, is really struggling when she hears you coming in. Um, so obviously, Kalish, I would imagine Kalish probably will approach her first and speak to her in Klingon mm-hmm. and reassure you know, tell her could become help is here. Yeah, because she's obviously looking to kick ass for whoever's. Uh, and you 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 quickly remove her bindings and her hood, yeah. um, and she sort of calms down when she sees um, that it's you know Klingon uh, and also Starfleet. And similarly to Jenko, um, who is slightly more groggy, um, but she starts to come around. And again, you can you can easily remove the the bindings because they're they're um, you know because you, you've got you know you you can access them. So you just remove the bindings and take off the hood. Um, and it, it is indeed Captain Tijenko. Um Again, you recognise her from both the video footage and from your dealings with her before. Mm-hmm. Um, and after a few moments where they are um, kind of reorientating to what the hell's going on, um, uh, you can explain. Um, uh, you can explain to them um, that uh, you know what's happened and what's led them to you. So. Um, do any of you have any any theories you want to voice before I explain to you, or they tell you what's happened? Um, I, first of all, I'm just wondering if she looked to recognise us. Tijenko? Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, she does. In fact, it, it takes a moment because, again, she's a little bit disorientated. But once she, she certainly recognises you because, again, it's, it's it's not a common thing to see a Klingon female in a you know with Starfleet communicator and with Starfleet personnel. And so, yes, she quickly i know you people I, we've met before and you know so she she does recognize you um mm. and she so what 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 again and in, in in the case of um because it's coming to coming to the end of our time so i want to kind of wrap this up yeah. um she tells you that what's ha- what happened is that she was um uh, basically was um drugged shortly after they arrived at the station and she was um she was out of the she was off the ship on on business when she was uh, um assaulted and drugged woke up to find herself in this place um and has been here for for certainly a, a few days two or three days um and the day before um you know the, yesterday this whoever it was who taken her, again she's been she's only been released from her bindings to eat um and this um cling on them was deposited in the same Thing. And, and basically your uh, Chitai tells you that she um, as you suspected she'd gone to do her um, she'd gone to do her um, practice when um, she'd put she'd been using the um, the, the, the guard and uh, actually been practicing on her own when this thing had gone off and the la- and she remembers a struggle and a fight um, and she um, was knocked up you know she struggled but was eventually overcome by the the injury from the um the mask the, the, the effect of the mask going off but she kind of put up a fight but then she doesn't remember much after that and has been here since and uh, she's only been able to um her and the orion have been able haven't really been able to communicate because again they've been gagged and um so they knew each other was there and again she she confirms that she was only um released uh, again she was covered by um a, a, a weapon she was she was not her, her eyesight wasn't cleared she wasn't she never had taken off and she was allowed to eat um last night um and has been here you know that's 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 what's happened to her she's been captured and um 
taken off. So um, after... Um, in, in, sorry, quick interjection. Um, yeah. As soon as I uh, read the situation, I'm going to call for reinforce, security reinforcements, especially when yes. they say they've been kidnapped and have been released to eat. I get, and we're expecting that to be delivered soon. So I want more security here. I would, okay. I would so, also say, also say um, get a security team to go to go and arrest the crew of the ship. You're right. Because this sounds to me like... What grounds? On what grounds? Kidnapping. Okay. Right. So um, you you do that. So um, the um, um, those events happen. So you um, um, security turn up at your location, and you get medical cut to come down and give them the once over. Uh, security detail goes to the ship. When they reach the ship, something interesting has happened. The um, um, first officer has uh, disappeared. And station records indicate that a um, um, escape pod from nearby, um, from a, you know somewhere nearby to the um, Orion ship, was uh, launched without authorization. And the Orion crew have discovered that the first officer was in fact tied up in his quarters, and had actually been drugged and was unconscious. And has been, it looks like he'd been unconscious for a period of time, mm. had been like confined. And um, it soon becomes apparent to what, what security suspect is that this is in fact the work of a changeling infiltrator. Mm. So, do um, I get that from the DNA that I took off him? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was coming to the DNA. So, you'd managed to take a DNA sample, and when you get to analyze it, um, you realise that this the, the the DNA trace you've taken has actually reverted back to uh, another form, and again, yes, you confirm that it is in fact uh, changeling uh, biomaterial. Um, fortunately for you, because it was such a small trace amount that you took, it isn't able to. Um, it's not like um, part of the the changeling whole, so it can't kind of reform itself into a changeling because it's literally you took a, a, a like a kind of a, a skin sample basically um but sure enough your um your reading so so what seems to have happened is that the the changeling returns to the ship looking like captain tuzhenko so had obviously been um had obviously been impersonating tuzhenko for those couple of days when she was behaving differently um had um um returned to the ship but had had falsified her biometrics to confuse the rec security records and had then disappeared. So she'd obviously taken on a different form um, once aboard the ship, presumably had knocked, had gone and found the first officer, um, incapacitated him and taken over him, uh, taken over his role. So he's obviously the one who you were talking to when you were doing your investigations. Um, he's the one who was talking to you. Changeling. Sorry, yeah. mm. Changeling. Um, and it now appears that he is now having having done whatever he in, had set out to do, um, has now um, left the, the station. Although um, the life scans that you've taken of the life pod, so when they look back at the security logs of the um, pod, they're, they're unable to be a hundred percent sure that there was a life form in the escape pod when it left the station. So, in which case, we need to quarantine the Orion ship and test every single person on the ship. Exactly, and security are security will kick into gear because they are um, obviously this is what they've been training for. Now, the only other thing to talk about is the the hockey match. So, what happens is uh, Chitai um, goes to station is is, is interviewed by station security um, and is under undergoes some medical attention, but then manages to um, but then is insistent on playing in the game, and um, um, the next day. The game goes ahead as planned, and you are all um, obviously invited to attend as um, special guests. And as it turns out, uh, the game ends with the Andorian Atomics beating the Klingon team soundly, um, even though Chitaya plays well and is, you know, had given it given it her best. It was a good match, um, but as it turns out, the um, uh, the Andorians still won the day. Um, by beating them uh, soundly, and after further investigations, um, as you say, um, you you the, the Orion ship is thoroughly checked, and it is determined that there are no. They certainly don't find any changelings on the crew, and eventually the ship is allowed to leave, um, and that's where we're going to leave it. So, mm. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I, 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 I hated rushing at the end, but I did really didn't want it to. I didn't want it to go on to another session because, again, um, this, I only thought it was only the last one. So I've really enjoyed it. Actually, I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed the um, the change of pace. So has anyone got anything they would like to add before we wrap it up for the night? Um, yeah, that that egg escape pod with no life signs. Did anyone see where those two droids went? <laughs> uh, God bless you, Karen. <laughs> we're, we're not. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it landed on Tatooine, and there's a there's, they've sent us, they've sent some troops to investigate. So we'll get back to you on that. C3PO is a changeling. <laughs> see that one coming? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, Steve. That's mate, really that was good. that was good fun. Yeah. Now, I have enjoyed. I haven't. Mm. I have very much enjoyed the change of pace. Um, like I say, um, it, you know, I've said it before, and I'll just reiterate: this was just an idea from a, a forum post. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it, and I, I like the opportunity to give you a bit of a different side of things, and to um, I'd like to do stretch more, a few different. I'd like to do more like that. It's, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Um, well, that's great. Um, I, I thank you very much for that. Um, I, I will leave it there for tonight. Then I'll just uh, just sign off by saying thanks to everybody for playing. I really enjoyed running that for you, and um, uh, I will see you in three weeks' time. So I wish you all yeah. the best, and um, I will speak to you soon. Take care. Yeah. Atom. Signing off. Yep. Lovely. Night. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Bye now. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Starship Vigilant. Kaz was played by Mike. David Osterhagen was played by Kevin. Colish was played by Kerin. Our music is Fanfare for Space by Kevin McLeod which is licensed under a Creative Commons license. See you next time.